Hello, in this lecture we'll take a look at a problem that will be very similar to the homework. The numbers will change, the format will remain much the same. Remember there's two things that we want to pick up, one being the accounting concepts and two being the maneuvering around the Excel worksheet. You will learn most of the maneuvering around an Excel worksheet and putting in tables and simple formulas, basic formula formulas you'll use 95% of the time within the accounting class. Then when you go to an Excel class you really want to pick up those added tips, those added tricks that could uh, format your Excel worksheets in such a way to present them um, better. So here we go through that. Keeping that in mind, we've got the accounting equation up top, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity, and we have the trial balance down here. You always want to have a trial balance up in front of you anytime you're doing any work because it'll tell you what accounts are assets, such as these with the green, liabilities such as these, uh, equity accounts, and the income statement accounts below the uh, owner's equity down here. This is all part of equity, but the income statement is the revenue and the expenses. We will be posting or recording these transactions over here in this area. Then we'll be posting them to the adjusting column. We will then see the effects from that posting in the beginning balance to the ending balance and see the quick effect on it. Then we'll take a look at the accounting equation and the effect on the accounting equation from these transactions. So let's take a look at the first one. We're concentrating here on accounts payable the account payable cycle. So purchase supplies on account. So first question, is cash affected? In this case, no, uh, we purchased it on account. Once again, we gotta get used to that terminology in uh, later, obviously in real life, we would know if we purchased it and we're on account on a credit card or something like that. In a problem, we need to know what the terminology will be. If it says on account in this context, then we purchased it not with cash, but with a credit card in this case. So we know that accounts payable then is affected, but it might be more difficult for us to think about the payable because it's a liability and we haven't thought about them as much as other types of accounts. So in some cases, it might be easier to know or think about first what it is we received, which in this case was supplies. If we look through our chart of accounts, we could see, okay, supplies, I see supplies here. And just by where it's located, I can see that it's an asset because it's up in the other assets. Now, you might be asking, why is it an asset and not an expense? A lot of companies would expense supplies if they were in material, meaning uh, putting them as an asset and then recording them down would not affect normal decision making. But if there are large supplies, then on a cruel basis, we really should post them as an asset here first and then expense them as we use them. So supplies is going to be our introduction basically to inventory in which we buy the inventory and then don't expense it until we use it, mainly we give it away in a sales process, then we expense it. So it's going to be an asset up here. And we know that all assets have debit balances for the most part, and we got more of them. Therefore, we're going to make it go up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. So I'm going to copy supplies first, and I'm going to put that on top in cell C5. Right-click, paste it, one, two, three. We got 450 of supplies. Then we're going to credit something, and I'm going to start to represent a credit. We could do this with a formula. I could say negative of this number. So notice that negative sign is just like an equals in that Excel sees it as where we want to put something in there in terms of a formula. And then when we hit enter, it'll take that and flip the sign. So if we look at the formula bar, that's the same as saying take that and multiply it times negative one. So uh, you could just type in negative 450. You could use the formula negative of that number and that will take whatever is in there and flip the sign, multiply it times negative one. Then the only question is, what are we going to put here in this account? We already said it wasn't cash. We're not going to decrease cash. The good thing isn't going down. The bad thing is going up. The liability is going up. Now, if we think about the liability, we know that accounts payable is going to have a credit balance. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is, which in this case will be another credit. So this is going to go up in the credit direction. We already knew that if we debit the supplies first. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it right underneath and sell C6. Paste it one, two, three. Then let's post it out, see the effect on the account, on the transactions, on the accounts. So I'm going to put my cursor in the uh, supplies, which is H7 equals, and then point to that 450. It's going to go from zero up to 450. Then we're in accounts payable right underneath. Notice we're out of balance at this time. And right underneath, we're going to say equals and point to the credit of 450. That's going to bring this up in the credit direction to 450. Again, we see the bracketed numbers as a credit. Notice there's no effect on net income. It was 50,000 before. It's still 50,000 because the supplies is not an expense down here. We re recorded it as an asset. 
Then we can see what happens to the accounting equation. Well, if I delete this and take a look, assets are at 50. If I undo, now it's at 5450. So it went up. So assets have increased. Why? Because we got supplies and supplies went up. Liabilities is right here. And so if I delete that and I say, okay, it's at zero, and then I undo it, it's at 450. Notice that this is a positive 450. This is a credit represented in Excel by a negative, but we see it as a credit. So it went up in the credit direction for us. And therefore, we're going to say liabilities increased. If this increased and this increased by the same amount, there's got to be no effect on equity. Again, we could check that. We could say, okay, if we do this and then we undo, we're at equity 50 and nothing happens to it when we repost it. So let's see what happens on the second one. Paid for supplies purchased in the past. So we purchased the supplies up here. Now we're basically going to pay for them. And is cash affected then? Yes, cash is affected. We paid. Cash has 50,000 debits. We need to make it go down. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. We're going to right click on supply. It's going to put it on the bottom because credits traditionally go on the bottom. I'm going to think about cash first, even though it is on the bottom and is a credit because I think it could be easier to do so. So I'm going to put a negative 450 in the credit column. Then I'm going to go above it in the debit column. I'm going to type a positive 450 in the debit column up here. Once again, if you want to start using a formula, I delete that. You could say negative of this number it's going to take that number which is a negative and then flip the sign so we could start using formulas like that if you would like to do so we need a positive 450 in one way or the other the only question is what are we going to debit and we paid for supplies again but we're not going to debit supplies again we already bought the supplies in the past we got the 450 for the supplies that are there already we're paying off the credit card or the account that we owe that 450 there so this is a credit balance we need to make it go down because we no longer owe that 450. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a debit. So that debit's going to go there, bringing that down to zero. I'm going to right click on that, copy it, paste it, one, two, three, post it out. So we're going to debit the accounts payable. Something's in there. So I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to go to the end of it. I can see that this is in there now. I'm going to say plus and point to this debit. So that's a debit. That's a credit. Those are opposites. That will make it go down to zero out of balance until we post to the other side which is in cash in h5 so we're going to say equals point to the credit that's a debit that's a credit this is going to go down so there we have it back in balance no effect on net income down here from these transactions so far so we can say what's the effect on assets we're going to go here i can delete it say assets is there and if i undo it assets went uh, down because we paid cash so assets decreased then we can think of liabilities. Well, if I delete it, liabilities are at 450. If I undo it, liabilities went down. So the bad thing went down. We no longer owe any liabilities because we paid it off. So they decreased. And if this decreased and this decreased by the same amount, this must be the same. We could double check that by deleting this, saying we're at 50, undo, still at 50, and therefore that is not changed. Then C says purchase auto service on account. So we got auto services on account. So is cash affected? No, because we purchased it on account in this case. So uh, th therefore, we know that we paid for it with an IOU, an accounts payable. But again, we might not know which way is it a debit or a credit as easily as if we think about different types of accounts. So we might want to think about what we got. What we got is auto service. So is there auto service? If we look at the chart of accounts, we can say, hmm, I see an auto expense. Maybe that's going to be it. So we're going to say auto expense. Now, expenses are only go one way. They're on the income statement, and they have debit balances. So expenses only go one way. They have